It's Daytona. Anything can happen. So much is out of your control and you can easily be involved in a big wreck. To have it ripped away from someone else's silly mistake would be hard to watch. Natalie does great things here, but it's so stressful. Uh, restart, I Joe. hate Daytona. I woke up around 5, 5.30 and got out of bed to start preparing mentally for my race at 11 today. And we get to the track, it's still raining. I already know, the cup race has to start at 4. If they can't start our race at 11, they're pushing us till after the cup race. Finally, we get a text, all crew chiefs meet here. I already know it. I know it's coming, our race is getting pushed. We finally hear the word, our race isn't until 9 o'clock tonight. I don't mind it. I like night races. Absolutely love racing under the lights. Sparks flying. You can see the tempers glowing. The original plan was that we were gonna race on Saturday. And then it rained out and 11 o'clock a.m. EST on Monday was the new start date. But it's raining and the cup race is at four and we, for TV purposes, cannot start our race any later than 11 because then the cup race won't be able to get in. They had to push our race to nine o'clock tonight. There's a lot mentally that goes into preparing yourself for a race. And when you get told that it's one time, like 11 o'clock, and then that changes, you have to fully shift in your head, all your emotions, all the excitement, all the nerves, the focus, everything has to shift and be turned off. And then you have to turn it all back on again. So it's a lot of energy and a lot of emotion that you keep all right, we're racing, we're not racing. We're racing, we're not racing. And it's been like that all weekend because we were supposed to race Saturday, now it's Monday. We've been told a couple times already, all right, we're going racing, now we're not. And then back and then forth. It's just like, it's a lot. But I said when we first got here, I don't care how long the rain is here, as long as we get qualifying in to get in the show, I will wait here all week <laughs> to go racing. I'm probably the only driver that is happy to be here this long. I know everyone else just wanted to get it in and get it over with, but I, all I cared about was qualifying and that happened. So I will wait happily <laughs> until this race starts. <laughs> I'm getting nervous. There's nothing unusual about it. But it's also Daytona and there's so much I can't control. It's just first race jitters, you'd be good. Go out and have fun. Just the whole thing feels like so thrown off because of the rain delays and like there's no driver intros, everything's just so different. Saturday night, normal schedule race. <laughs> it's a Monday. You really tried to trick me. <laughs> Who cares what day of the week it is? I don't care what day of the week it is. warrior outfit on you're zipped up you can't be nervous now you're not human anymore I mean, it's Hell yeah. i'm gonna bring go your helmet fun. bag in here quick and just make sure everything's in there all right <laughs> As that time comes closer and closer to us going green, the nerves really start to kick in. We want to bring this car home in one piece. We want to finish this race and we want to have a good night. Yeah, so like on the grid at the start of the race, I can get like a look from her. I don't know what it is, but I'll get a look and it's kind of like, hey, no more pictures. I need to just chill by the car. I'm there to let her vent, be a wall, get her a water. Whatever she needs, I'm there. Derek is on pit road with me. He's not just my husband, he's also a driver coach. and He supports me more than anybody. Once we're right there on pit road, I turn to him for anything I need because I know he'll be there for me. The crew chief is telling me what the strategy is once we're on pit road. The team owner's coming up to me, you know, giving me a pep talk, telling me what he thinks, and just trying to get me in the right mindset and everybody's excited. Once we buckle in and we're rolling off onto the racetrack off of pit road, all of our strategies are starting to come down and be completely finalized. It's the start of the race and the nerves go away 
and I'm just like fully locked in. <laughs> so somewhere in the first stage, pretty early in the race, unfortunately, one of Natalie's teammates got involved in a wreck pretty early. So while that team was in the garage, kind of getting that car ready and doing what they needed to do, the stage ended, Natalie came down pit road, had just a freak accident. One of the air hoses blew out after changing the right front tire. So when they came over to the left side, the left front tire wasn't able to get changed. So we had to come back down pit road. They fixed, put on a new hose, new air gun. But it was really cool to see after that first pit stop, the 91 crew finished up what they needed to do. And then instead of taking off their suits and loading up and going to the plane early, they came over to Natalie's box and helped out, which was awesome to see. So all the Drive Smart crew, thank you guys for the help because it, it was really cool to see Natalie have a team rally behind her when they didn't have to. The first stage of the race, our goal was just to ride. The cars in front of us were gonna get wild and they were gonna wreck, which they did. And our goal was to miss those wrecks and ride because we wanna make the end of the race. And that is what we did. We found a really good group of people and we just stuck together and we were riding. And that was what we needed to do. Going into stage two after our pit stop, you know, got four tires, fuel, went back out, did it all over again. All right, just ride. There's a lot going on. There's gonna be a lot of wrecks, same scenario. Just hang out, be patient. And as a driver, going into these super speedway races, to ride and be patient is really difficult, especially when you have a car that you know can go to the front. And my car was capable of going to the front, but we had a strategy. And once that strategy is set in place, everybody needs to be on board. We're in the final stage of the race, and this is when green flag stops start to happen. The strategy was to stay out as long as possible, because there's most likely going to be a caution. If we don't have to make this green flag stop, we're not going to. I'm technically a rookie. I'm not running for rookie of the year, but I'm a rookie. And if I don't have to make that green flag stop and maybe make a mistake and cause, you know, a worse finish than we could have had, we were praying we didn't have to do that. And as things started to shuffle out and people started to go to pit road, we end up in the lead and we led a few laps at Daytona, which is crazy. I could see it coming. I was so thankful because my team put me in a great position with a great strategy, and that was great press for our sponsors, and they needed that because this weekend could have been completely different, especially with the weather. So to make it into the race, to get those lead laps, and get that TV time for this new sponsor that was in the sport, that meant a lot to me and that meant a lot to my team. I pull out of the lead and I get back and I'm, uh, and I'm running third now because the guy behind me wanted his lap back and he was being a little aggressive. So I was just like, I'm backing out of this. We led a few laps, I'll, I'll get in third place and we'll just ride. The caution comes out that we needed and I'm riding around on these pace laps waiting for pit road to open and it is calm. But wherever you are on the racetrack, you're not safe. You could be riding 20 car lengths back from the big pack and you could still get caught up in it. But there were so many close calls. There was a lot of wrecks that happened right in front of us that we had to miss. And one particularly at the end, we did get some left front damage from, but they fixed the car up really good and really fast on pit road. And when I went back out and we went back green flag, there was almost no difference. The car still sucked up really nice in the draft. It was still fast. Towards the end of the race, I think we had like four lap stretch at the end of the race. Um, Natalie was having a blast on the radio. Uh, the team there kind of deciding what to do. And Natalie was like, if you want me to go, I'll go. But also, I'm perfectly fine making sure that we can roll this car into the trailer fairly complete. We made history again at Daytona this weekend by leading laps, and I was the first woman since Danica in 2013 to lead laps in the Xfinity series, and that meant a lot to me, and I didn't even realize that that was making history for women in the sport until after the race, and we all debriefed and talked about it.
It almost brought tears to my eyes because we made a history a couple years ago by finishing fifth at Daytona. It was exciting for me to have her smiling after the races. It's amazing what a good night at the racetrack can do to your mental state when you're in pain from the arthritis and things like that. I know she wasn't feeling great after the race, but she was jumping around after the race. We come down pit row and I find out that I finished P18. I'm so happy that we were even in the race, because like I said, that was a win to even qualify into the race. Do I wish my position at the end of the day was better? Absolutely. My car was capable of it, I was capable of it, but we have to start somewhere. And to finish the race and to finish in the top 20 was a great goal to have, and we accomplished that.